Today we celebrate Sky Sunday. We join with the clouds and the wind, the dusk and the dawn. We listen to the voice of the sky in pro proclaiming God's glory. We stand in awe before the vast reaches of space, the septillions of stars and countless planets. And we give thanks for this earth and for the life that it supports. The sky plays an active part in our psalm for today. The sky proclaims the glory of God and the firmament announces the work of God's hands. For the psalmist, the sky is a manifestation of God's glory and presence. And it isn't only that the psalmist is called and inspired to praise God, but also that the sky in its own way praises God as well. There is no speech nor words, yet the voice of the heavens goes out through all the earth. People throughout the ages have watched the sun rise and track its place across the sky like the psalmist did. What do you experience when you watch the sun rise? Cosmologist Brian Swim invites us to stand every morning and greet the dawn. He reminds us that life on earth would not exist except for the sun. Four billion years of life on this planet owes its existence to the free giveaway of energy from the sun energy which we and our fellow creatures embody. Swim talks about this giveaway of energy from the sun as primal generosity, which we receive day after day. And we then have the capacity to turn this energy into gifts of generosity and service towards others. Watching the sunrise every day can help instill in us a sense of gratitude for the daily gift of life and be inspired by our vocation to live with generosity and love. For me, to watch the sky at sunrise is to give thanks to God for the gift of life, for the sun, for the rain that sustains plants, animals and waterways, and for the air that we all breathe, and to be thankful for and inspired by the life of Jesus, a life lived in generosity and love. What do you feel when you look at the night sky? Today we know that the sun is just one of septillions of stars that are in the universe and that there are countless planets. When I look at the night sky, I see just a fraction of those stars and planets. And I know then that I and the earth of which I am a part are such a minuscule, a minuscule proportion of that creation. And yet also to know that I am deeply loved. Observing a brilliant night sky full of stars and planets or watching the dawning of a new day might be times when we're called to praise God when we experience amazement and when our hearts are full of gratitude. But are there times when you look at the sky or have looked at the sky and you felt otherwise? Clear night after clear night and dawn after relentless dawn during drought perhaps or if you've suffered from heat stroke or sunburn or when the sky's been blackened by bushfire smoke, by smog, or by plagues of locusts. Or when threatening clouds and violent winds pretend a storm of huge disastrous proportions. We see in two of our readings today where a blackened sky has deep theological significance for the ancient Jews. God's covenant with the Hebrew nation included creation as they knew it. And they understood that human action and divine action had consequences for the creation. The prophet Jeremiah's vision of Babylon is one of judgment and anger for God, from God that is manifest through war, destruction, and effectively the undoing or reversal of creation. The earth becomes a wasteland and there is no light in the heavens. The earth mourns and the sky grows black. In our passage from Mark's gospel, Jesus lies dying on the cross, crying in abandonment. Again, the sky is dark at the significance of this event. And so it was also that the Apostle Paul understood Christ's resurrection as the renewal of covenant with all of creation. We read in our Ephesians passage for today that the resurrected Christ reconciles all things, things in heaven and things on earth, into relationship of fulfillment with God. A blackened sky may not have the same significance for us today as it did in antiquity. And yet at the same time, we know that human action 
has ramifications for the well-being of the sky and of creation on a scale that was not possible back then. Some examples are acid rain that's caused by the release of sulfates and nitrates into the atmosphere. The impacts of particulate pollution on air quality and human health. And the increased levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere with all the consequences for the global climate. To know that God loves creation and works for the healing and wholeness of the earth is deeply significant for our churches who are called to play a part in that healing and wholeness. When I look at the sky, I know that although I am such a small part of creation and a small part of the earth, my actions and the actions of human communities and society across this planet have ramifications of the well-being for the earth and its inhabitants. When I look at the sky, I feel deep in my heart that my vocation is to live a life of loving generosity towards non-human neighbours as well as towards human ones. What do you experience when you look at the sky? Our three discussion questions for today are, firstly, have you ever looked at the sky and felt called to praise God? Second, have you ever looked at the sky and felt abandoned by God? And third, how might a deepened awareness and appreciation of the sky help humans to see our place in the web of life in a different way? So those three questions again. Firstly, have you ever looked at the sky and felt called to praise God? Secondly, have you ever looked at the sky and felt abandoned by God? And lastly, how might a deepened appreciation of the sky help us humans to see our place in the web of life in a new way?